What's happening everybody, the Poets here, hope you're doing well and staying safe. And today's video is a continuation of this AM4 to AM5 conversion that I'm doing for this new build. And this is, well, so make sure you check the last video because this is a water block for an AM4 uh, CPU. This is an AM5 CPU. So this is the 7950X. This was taken off of a 5950X system. And uh, yeah, very sensible upgrade, right? Um, yeah, so basically, it's not uh, as clear cut and dry as AMD said, you know, so you actually may have to get uh, special parts from water cooling manufacturers, AIO manufacturers, air cooling manufacturers, in order to have your old cooling solutions fit on these new X670E motherboards or X, you know, whatever type of new AM5 platform motherboard you get, because they are not all compatible. So uh, from my last video, a uh, number of you actually said, hey, we would love to see you clean this water block. This is the Thermaltake W7 Plus water block that I had on my previous Destro build, cooling a 5950X, and it did an exceptional job. I was really happy with it, and it had really good RGB. This was on the Thermaltake Distro Case 350P as well, and it just all synced very nicely. Um, so I'm going to use this again, see how well it does on the 7950X here. So that's the direct upgrade from the 5950X. Still 16 cores, 32 threads, but physically different. Does run much hotter. Uh, this will run at about 95 degrees Celsius as intended, apparently. So I'm really curious to see how well this performs. Uh, I did speak to EKWB and uh, just the last two days. They are making blocks uh, for AM5 specifically. And um, so I'm gonna be testing that as well. But in the meantime, this is the only block I have. So we are, that is compatible with AM5. So let's go ahead and clean this because this actually has a lot of filth from the previous fluid, which was really good fluid. Uh, it was engineering sample fluid that Thermaltake actually gave me. And it lasted a very long time. I was very happy with it. It was easy to clean as well. Uh, it was more of a textured type of fluid, uh, not quite as uh, annoying as the Primo Chill fluid in terms of like cleaning, uh, but looks somewhat similar, but in my opinion, better uh, because it wasn't as as like thick and textured. It was like a subtle mix between thick and textured and more uh, see through. So it was a nice balance, especially when you have like a, a full water cooled case, like the <laughs> distro case 350P, you want to be able to somewhat see through the fluid and allow all that RGB color to just come on through and give you rainbow vomit everywhere. So I'm talking a lot. Let's just get into this. Let me show you how to clean this block. And it's gonna be very similar to a lot of different blocks because this does have um, common features to a lot of other water blocks basically. So first step, Let's clean it. Um, I want to always make sure I'm cleaning the backside before I start kind of opening things up. This solution right here is uh, called Arctic Clean and it's a kit of two. So this is Arctic Clean Thermal Material Remover uh, because there's still some older thermal paste here. And basically what you're supposed to do is apply the first batch first and let it sit for like 30 seconds. And so I'm going to just kind of spread it around, allow it to kind of get into all the grooves because there's a lot of like tiny screws on this one. I think there's like two, four, six, eight, uh, 12 screws on the back of this one. Now you won't always see that many screws and it really doesn't matter uh, as long as there's enough uh, pressure on the, on the plate to make sure that you know, you're know you getting enough heat transfer, I I'm fine. Uh, especially when the screws are kind of on the outside of where the IHS is actually going to be touching anyway. So it's not a big deal. But it does mean that there's more little tiny grooves to uh, try to get this old thermal compound out. And of course, you have a trusty toothbrush as well. And so that's what I'm going to use to kind of just get in some of these grooves here. And uh, we'll just fast forward to unscrewing all this. And so what I have here is just distilled water. I just like to kind of throw these in here. And that allows to uh, allows a lot of the older gunk to just kind of get thrown off of this. This is just a very simple, just kind of O-ring, rubberish O-ring. 
and you can let it sit in there for a little while. And then this is going to be handled slightly differently. So I've never taken this one apart. Now some of them allow you to actually like remove this or remove a jet plate. This doesn't actually have a jet plate that you can remove because the jet plate is basically this right here. Um, so it's like built into the block, which is perfectly fine. And this also gives me an opportunity to kind of remove some of this stuff here. So just going to dab with the sold water and it looks like this fluid. Oh, there we go. There was a little jet plate. So stuff like that, you just never know until you actually, you know, work on it, which is pretty cool. The downside is, I don't know which one was, which way was the uh, top and which way was the bottom, but we'll figure this out. So I'm just getting the rest of this old gunk off. And you want to make it look nice and clean, nice and pretty. Happy trees. Because this is see-through. Right, you don't want to put uh, alcohol on this uh, because alcohol and water cooling don't really mix um, because there's a lot of acrylic components, and alcohol can actually crack acrylic and just like give you a really bad day. So avoid that. Distilled water is the way to go because you see this is like an electronic part right here, and that. If it gets touched by the distilled water, it'll be perfectly fine because distilled water is non-conductive as long as the distilled water is clean. So now this distilled water here is a little bit dirty uh, because it does have some of the older fluid from this O-ring in it, but that older fluid was also non-conductive as well. Uh, but still, you want to minimize exposure as best as possible anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and now I'm going to see what we can do about this. Hey, very nice. So this does come off. Hey, it just disappeared on me. There we go. So this little thing here is basically like an O-ring too. And so I'm just going to clean this off with the distilled water. There we go. That was simple as that too. So this actually like, I guess goes in there somehow it lines up. So we'll figure that out later. Set that aside, but I do want to scrape the rest of this off. So, and this is just one big metal plate at this point. So this can get as wet as it needs to. That's perfectly fine. There's no electronics here, no nothing, as you can see. And so I can even kind of do this and allow it to really get in there. And most of this crud will just come right off because this fluid that Thermaltake gave me was actually pretty decent. Uh, Paul's Hardware also used this fluid successfully for a long time as well. And uh, this past weekend at TwitchCon, when I was with Thermaltake, Thermal Mike in particular, we were having a long discussion about this fluid and how well it performed. So uh, hopefully Thermaltake will actually put this into real production instead of just like two of us <laughs> in America actually having this fluid. So I try to keep the fluid as clean as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump this and add more distilled water. I see a little bit of discoloration right here, but that's kind of normal with water blocks over time. I just want to make sure that there's no um, chunks of anything that's impeding any type of water flow. This is looking good. You can see from the front. Now I just need to clean these inner rings as well. Uh, because as you're screwing things in and fluid actually gets in there, uh, it can actually get into the loop as well. Now, if you're having very uh, troublesome fluid getting out of your system, you can also just use some, uh, some toothpaste as well to like really scrub this. And it doesn't have to be any like thing harsh. It's like normal whitening toothbrush or, and toothpaste. I mean, and it'll be perfectly fine. 
So it looks like this is all good. Doesn't seem like there's anything left on there, but to dry it off. So let's do that. So one thing that I did learn a long time ago is when you're done with your bottle of distilled water, your buckets of distilled water, just go ahead and set those far away. You don't want to knock anything over. So, so that looks good there. Obviously it does have a proper orientation because of the logos here, right? And so I'm going to set that aside there. Go ahead and pat this down as well. And the reason why we use distilled water is because normal tap water has all kinds of chemicals and metals in there. And you want to definitely avoid putting that in your loop uh, because uh, not all metals work well together. For example, uh, copper and aluminum, they, they don't do well. Uh, there's a, then an electrochemical uh, reaction that happens when they're in the same loop where uh, the aluminum will basically dissolve, turn into mush if there's copper in there. So copper always wins. And so it's kind of the same thing with your tap water. There are things in the tap water that you just don't want in your loop. So never use um, tap water. Some people use tap water to you know, clean their loops. I don't recommend that at all. I, I always just clean with distilled water because uh, then you have to do a thorough job of flushing out all of the previous tap water. And that's just unnecessary steps in my opinion. So you can kind of see uh, some marks here. And I can't actually feel them with my fingernail. So these could actually affect the temperature uh, for the 7950X. But it's the only block I have. And I'm not sure how that actually happened. So I am rough on my CP water block sometimes. So it could just be my own fault. Because it wasn't like that when I first bought it. Or got it. I got this from Thermaltake. Thank you, Thermaltake. And sorry for the marks. <laughs> All right, let's uh, figure out how to put these back together and uh, go to town. So these are always interesting because you have to like really get them in the right place. So you can't always just be like willy nilly with the O-rings. Um, they kind of have been trained to be a certain way on a water block over time, especially with all the heat changes, you know, your PC turning on and off, going on full load with a game or video editing session and then being cold again. So you just want to make sure that you're putting it in the exact same way and just give it a nice rub down to make sure that uh, you don't have any kinks forming. Like over here, there was more slack. So now I'm kind of pushing away to even out that slack as it was going to be tighter down here. So you just want it to be nice and flush. Perfect. So let's add a new paper towel. Make that look all nice and neat for the camera, for the viewers. This as well. And again, there was an upgrade kit that allowed me to do this, moving the AM4 CPU water block to an AM5 platform. So shout out to Thermaltake for making that happen. And now for this water block, it looks like it doesn't really matter if it's in this orientation or that orientation, it's the same. But I believe like these darker marks were down below here, I believe. But it doesn't matter though. It honestly doesn't matter. So this, I'm guessing was something like that. And then this would have been like in there. Like that. So something of that nature. So there you go. And then as that is like that, we are going to go ahead and push this through. Like I said, push this through. 
and then try to line up the holes perfectly. And then this is definitely one of those things where I do like to do the crisscross method as well. So I just kind of get the basics down in here. And with these blocks, as you tighten one, some of these others can become loose as well. So you always just want to go through and make sure. That looks very good. All right. So that is it. So that's basically how you clean a lot of water blocks. Uh, and uh, thermal take, this was easy. EKWBs are very easy. I've done numbers of uh, videos of cleaning EKWB water blocks, uh, an Optimus water block, and they're all basically the same. Uh, you're going to have the metal plate, depending on what type of metal, you know, copper, aluminum, nickel plated copper. Uh, you'll have your O-ring, that rubber black thing that kind of goes around it, holding the fluid in tight. And um, then your top cover. So whatever that may be, acrylic or you know, or acetal, whatever it may be. So the concept is basically the same for all of them. Uh, but if you have a particular water block uh, that you're curious about, go ahead and check my previous videos or um, just Google. <laughs> Google has a lot of answers. So uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I will be doing a video of how I like to properly apply thermal paste to AM5 processors because as you can tell, uh, they're not just square anymore. They are, I don't even know, I don't, I don't know what shape that is. But if you know what shape this is, you let me know in the comments. Uh, so that'll be the next video. Let me know uh, what questions you guys may have. If you like the style of video, like and subscribe, share the video, really appreciate it. And uh, we do have giveaways that are happening as well. So check uh, my TikToks and all that stuff for the up-to-date information on giveaways. Because I have, I have too much stuff. You know, vendors keep sending me stuff. Vendors, partners keep sending me stuff. I have too much stuff. So uh, it's time to start giving some away and uh, letting you guys do some really cool PC builds. All right. So uh, with that, we'll call that a, a wrap. See you in the next video. Peace.